Hey everybody and welcome back to another Darkfall tutorial. So today we're going to be doing a Witcher inspired VFX shot as you can see in the example here. So some of you may already know that I'm a big fan of The Witcher and since it's just been released on Netflix there's a whole bunch of VFX things that are interesting and really good and one of them is the eyes for Yennefer. If you want to check this site out there'll be a link in the description and this is a blog post of the breakdown of the trailer. So we will be looking at Geralt's eyes in the future if you guys are interested in that and we can see that it's different from the game version where it's more of a cat's eye but again we can always look at this in detail in the future if you guys want that. But if we scroll down you can see there's a whole bunch of cool images but the one we want to focus on is this one here which is Yennefer's eyes. So you can see it's really really cool. So there's two colours, we have this violet colour and maybe a bit of a pinkish purpley colour as well. So we're going to use this as a reference to come back to if you ever need it. Again there'll be a link in the description, go ahead and check that out. So let's go ahead and jump right in. So the first thing you'll need to do is to download the Darkfall VFX nodes add-on. It's a free add-on and it's got a whole bunch of VFX stuff. There's a link in our blog if you want to go ahead and check that out. But you can do this effect without the VFX node add-on. It's just going to take you a lot longer. So I do have a video showing you how to do it without the add-on, which you can click up here. So once you have the VFX nodes add-on installed, we can now change this window from the 3D view to the movie clip editor. Go ahead and open up the movie clip that you want to use. So this is the clip I'm using and there'll be a link in the blog if you want to download this too. So this clip is quite long, uh, we're only going to use a small section of it. So for the start frame, uh, I think 256 is the one I like. And then the end frame, 362 I believe. But you can use the whole clip if you want. You can just set scene frames and it'll use the entire clip. Once you've done that, jump to the first frame. And then I'm just going to prefetch this so we can play through it. So we can see we've got a wide range of motion, she also closes her eyes. So there's a few things we need to tackle. So we're going to need a few masks, let's go back. So instead of starting at the beginning, I'm just going to go to where she's got her eyes open, like this. And this is where I'm going to start from. Go ahead and change your tracking settings to whatever you prefer. I'm going to change this to location rotation, change this to previous frame. Then I'm going to enable normalize and change this to the track tab. So now I have a hold control and left click. We can add a tracking marker. If we hold Alt S, we can enable the search size, or you can go over to the clip display and then enable it here if you want. I'm just going to scale this down a little bit and then scale the whole thing up. Now, if I go over here to the copy from active track, click this button. Now, when I control left click, it'll just use the same settings and sizes. So press A, select both of these. Let's close this tab and then open up the tracking tab and we want to track these forward so it stops on frame 318 since the eyelids have now just gone over the tracks so what I'm going to do is go back a few frames to here so I'm just going to hit clear forward just so it clears anything after this point then if we jump forward a frame we could manually uh, move these so select this one, press G jump forward, just keep moving it a little bit and then just keep moving forward until the eye opens again. So when the eye stops opening, you can now track this forward again. It should track to the end, as we see it does. So there might be a little bit of jumping, especially when we parent the mask to this, but that's not going to be an issue since we're going to refine the mask. But once we've got this side done, let's go back to here and just do the exact same thing. So jump forward a frame, press G and move it just a little bit and then keep jumping forward and now we can track this forward for the rest of the way looks pretty good now we just want to do the same thing but for these frames at the beginning so we can see it stops here and then we could try and track this backwards like this see how far we get and then clear behind it go back press G and just repeat the process and the good thing about blinking it only happens over a few frames so you're not spending the entire clip doing the same thing I'll do the same thing for this one 
and there we go so that should work for the tracking markers and again the more time you spend with this the better the whole effect will look another thing i would do if you're recording this footage yourself maybe add some tracking markers instead that way we can get a perfect track and then clean the tracking markers and it ends up being less work so when it comes to recording this yourself maybe think about adding some tracking markers now we have this done i'm going to change this from the tracking mode to the masking mode so we can go over here to the tracking and change it to masking or we can press tab just to switch between them i'm going to need a couple of masks and we've touched upon masks in previous videos but for this one it's going to be a little bit different so hopefully you'll find some use in this so let's go ahead and create our first mask click new and let's rename this mask i'm going to call this color outer since we're going to have the outer color and then the inner color so if we zoom in i'm going to left click just to add the 2d cursor depending on your key preferences you may need to hold shift and then left click then i'm going to hold shift and press a add a circle we can hit s and scale this down then i want to shift d just to duplicate it instead of moving it around i'm going to right click just to leave it in the same position press s and scale this down so now we have this we don't really know what's going on so let's go over here I'm going to use the mouse wheel and just scroll through this and find where it says mask display. If we click this and then choose overlay, it will now show you the mask. So now what I want is the outside here to be black. That's fine. I want the inside here to be white and then this circle I want to be black. So if I just change this to the masking tab. So with this mask layer selected, all we need to do is click holes and there we go. It's now created a hole from this mask. If we press G, move this mask around we can kind of see what's happening if we were to move this mask out on its own it's just a simple mask but once it's inside another mask it almost becomes like a boolean tool so now i have this i want to change the mask back to normal and then select all of these hit Control c just to copy them then if we go over to the mask layers what i'm going to do is lock this into place so i can no longer move this i might as well rename this as well to left for being on the left side now I'm going to click new, rename this right, and then I'm going to press control V just to paste this in. Then if we press G, move this over, just kind of position this in place. Now, since we copied this over, we would assume that the holes work, but you can see on this it's activated on this one. It's not. So we just need to activate it on this one as well. And again, we can always see if it works by going over to mask display and clicking overlay and we can see it works. Now we need to parent them to the tracking markers. So select the first tracking marker here, select this layer and then just unlock it. Then press A to select all of it and then hold control and press P. Now it's been parented and then we can lock this back into place. Do the same thing for this side so right click select the marker select the layer press a Control p now it's been parented to this one and we can see we play through this it works fine and you'll want to go through this now we don't want them jumping or sliding out of place out of position it will look unnatural so you just want to go through these and make sure that they stay relatively in the same position so we can see here it perfectly lines up but after this jump here it's no longer in place so i'm going to select this mask unlock it press a i'm going to go back a few frames say here i'm going to turn on automatic keyframing and then i'm going to press g and then hit enter so let's just enter the keyframe right here then if i jump forward a frame i'm going to press g now to move all these down just like this and then move forward a frame do the same thing so now i'm happy with this mask let's go ahead and create our next one this is going to be for the color inner and what we could do is we could go back to the color outer so with this layer selected i'm going to press a twice real quick just to deselect everything then i want to select this inner mask so if i hover the mouse over one of these points and then press l it will select all of them that's linked together. Then if I press Control C just to copy it, let's go back to this inner one. Press Control V to paste it. This is the right side. Then go back to the outer. Make sure we select this one. Select this layer. 
do the same thing, press L, Control C to copy, go back, and then let's add this to a new layer. Control V to paste it. And there we go. And you want to play through and make sure it all works. And it should work fine because and we've just done the same thing for the outer, so it should definitely work. If not, you can always change it. And since we've got the automatic keyframe still turned on, any changes you make will stay. So make sure you turn this off when you're not using this. Just create another mask, and this one's going to be for the pupil. And again, we can always go back and uh, copy and paste as we just did. And now we can just uh, rescale these. So select this one and scale it down to be the size of the pupil and then get it in position. You could also do the same for any highlights that you want to keep since when we change the color it will also change the color of the highlights as well. So again you can just shift D to duplicate, scale it down and these are just optional things you don't have to do this it I think it just looks nicer. And now we need one last mask for the eyelids and we need to animate her as well since she's blinking so let's go ahead and do that. Let's go back to around here Add a new mask, call this eyelids, and I'm going to hold control left click four times, just kind of make this diamond shape, press alt C to close the mask, then I'll press A to select all of them, then I'm going to press V, then I'm going to choose automatic, so we get this shape here and just drag these in until we've matched the shape of the eyelid. And if this is the first time you're trying to create masks uh, by using these handles, it can be a little bit annoying at first, but once you get used to it, it becomes a lot easier to use. So now we have this one. I'm going to right click on the tracking marker, press A to select all of these, control P, and there we go. Do the same thing for this side here. Now, if we play through this, we'll see that the masks work up until a point. We can see when she starts rotating her head that the rotation doesn't copy. <laughs> so we're gonna go through this and add some keyframes. And all we need to do is just rotate it and move it in position. Since we're already doing the keyframing anyway with the uh, the blinks, um, it's not really much of an issue. So now we can go back to about here. Before she starts closing the eye. So this frame here. I'm gonna turn on automatic keyframes. Make sure we go to the left side and select it. I'm going to press G to add a keyframe, hit enter, then if we start going back, all we need to do is just move these now and just kind of follow the eye. So just keep moving a frame backwards and moving these into position. So again, you want to take your time and go through this and just keep moving these into position to match the eye. Now when we've got it here, when the eye is pretty much closed and we can't see the eyeball, I'm going to press A to select all of it, and then I'm going to press G, and just move this out of the way, just so it's not in the shot anymore. And if we keep going backwards, we'll see it's popped back into place, and that's because it's parented to the tracking marker, so what I'm going to do is just keep moving backwards, press G, move it back out of the way, G, move out of the way. So now if we play through this, we'll see as she opens the eye, so that looks pretty good, and then go through. Now as the head rotates, and we can see this side sort of goes into this direction, this goes into this direction, the masks sort of no longer line up. So we just need to keep an eye on that. If we move over, keep moving this into position. We could jump ahead, then press A, select all of it, and press R to rotate it, S to scale it. So it's a little bit tedious um, and maybe a bit time consuming, but it's only a few frames and having a blink with these eye effects always look better, I think. So now we have this eye done, we'd need to do the same for the other one. So once you've got your masks done, now we can change this from the movie clip editor to the compositor. And we can check use nodes, then let's go to the dark fall VFX. So if we go down to the eye effects, then we're going to use the color change. We can first get rid of these nodes by pressing remove nodes. Then if we hit add additional, it'll add the nodes that we need. Let's select this movie clip icon and choose the movie clip that we've been working with. Then if you want to see a preview in the background, just go to backdrop here. 
So now we have this, let's click eye color change just to add the eye color change node. Plug this in and connect it up to the viewer node. Let's just move these, make some space. Let's grab the first mask. So we have a whole bunch of masks. I accidentally created two masks for some reason. I don't know why. <laughs> let's start with the outer color. And then if we plug this into the eye mask slot here, just give this a color first off. Let's give this a violet color. So if we just play through this, let's see when she closes the eye, um, they still appear. <laughs> so what we need to do is use the second mask. I'm just gonna close this down. And this is for the eyelids. So select this one, choose your eyelids mask. And then if we plug this in, they will now disappear. Then when the eye opens, they should appear. So then we can go through these and play around with the settings. If you don't know how to use this, there'll be a link up here. Go ahead and check out the video on how to use the color change node. So that's the outer color. Let's go ahead and add in another color change node. Let's drop this over here. And then let's just select this mask and duplicate it. Let's change this to the color inner. Plug this in. But we see the colors changed. Let's just give this a pink color for now. And we can kind of see the two colors happening. We also need to use the eyelid mask. If we close the eye, we'll see. So we can use the same mask, plug this into the eyelids mask. And there we go, get rid of it. We can close this down now. And we have one more mask, which is for the garbage. So again, any of the pupils or highlights that you don't want to be affected, you would use this mask here. So I'm gonna select the pupils. And then I want to plug this into the garbage mask slot here. So now we want to play around with these and try and match the colors for Yennefer. We have a whole bunch of options that we can play around with the eye brightness. So we can brighten these eyes up. But again, if you notice the example, they're not really bright, they're quite dark. So now we have this, we want to render this out. Again, we can use the render settings here. Make sure you set the video resolution of your movie clip. We can set the frames and also the frame rate. Let's choose the output where this is going to be saved. Then we can choose the file format. I want this to be a movie clip. So I'm going to use FFmpeg video. For the container, I'm going to use MPEG4. Then we can go ahead and render this out. So hopefully you find this video helpful. Um, if, you guys, if you guys want to see. If you did, be sure to give this video a like. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.